In this Dragonfly 3 training video, we're going to look at the features of image import. We're going to look at three different examples. First, we'll look at how you can import a stack of two-dimensional images, for example, a stack of TIFF files. Then we'll look at how you can import a three-dimensional volume file, which might be encoded as a 3D TIFF or a .raw, .dat combination. And then finally, we'll look at importing a .raw file where the metadata is not encoded in the file. Let's start by examining the import of a stack of TIFF files. Unless you change your user preferences, when you launch Dragonfly, you'll be confronted with this Import Datasets dialog. From here, you can either choose to select a folder that has TIFF files, or you can click the Add button and navigate to the folder with TIFF files and select the specific TIFF files you want to import. I'm going to go to my candy bar example. I'm going to choose the first TIFF file, scroll down, and then shift click to choose the last TIFF file. Then I'll click open. Now in my queue, you see that I have a set of images from 0 through 982. If you're ready to proceed, you can click next. Alternatively, you can select on any one of the individual images and then click See Preview. That gives you a snapshot of what your image will look like. If you change to a different slice by clicking, you'll see a different preview. So I'll close this and I'll click Next. This is the second page of the Import Datasets dialog. Here, you can change some parameters. For example, if I want to call my dataset Candy Bar, I can type that in. In this case, the pixel size was encoded in the image, and Dragonfly was able to decode that the pixel size were 33.32 microns per pixel. If that's wrong, you can enter that in here. For example, if you know it's 45 microns per pixel, you could type it in 45 for the X, Y, and the Z values. If you decide you want to load in a, a downsampled version of the data, you can choose to do that. You can look over here and see that this particular data set is 1,884 pixels in X by 1,904 in Y by 982 in Z with 16 bit depth, which gives us 6.7 gigabytes of data. If we're worried that that's too much to load, I could downsample in X and Y. If I downsample by a factor of 2 in each, then my file size has gone down by a factor of 4. Or I could do downsampling by 2 in X, Y, and Z. And now you see it's gone down to less than 1 gigabyte. Another way of working with this, let me reset these to 111. Another way of working with downsampling or reducing the footprint of your data, rather, is to choose to crop the image. If I click on Crop Image, I can see a preview of the first slice, Visible Slice 1. If I scroll through the data, I can see that here's my candy bar, and really I don't need anything above this in Y, or maybe this in plus Y, here for my X origin and here for my upper X boundary. And as I scroll through, if I see that it doesn't go beyond those boundaries, then I can read in just that subvolume. Furthermore, if I scroll through and see that the data only goes to about this slice in Z, say about slice 850, I can tell it I only want to read in through slice 850. I can also go backwards the other direction and see where the data starts. The important thing here is we're reducing the footprint of our data. So if we say that the candy bar starts around slice 160, I could type in 155 to be conservative. And now by reducing the data boundaries in X and Y, so in X from 465 to 1591, in Y from 354 to 1719, and in Z from 155 to 180, when I click OK, you'll see that this 6.7 gigabyte data set is now reduced to 2 gigabytes. I haven't downsampled the data, I've just gotten rid of all of the superfluous data on the margins. So that's a convenient way of working more efficiently with your memory. If you want to encode a data offset and slope, you can. This is unnecessary for most data sets. In the case of data that's encoded in 16-bit, the values will probably range from 0 to 65,535. If you wanted to apply a linear transform, you could use the physical conversion coefficients for that. You also have the ability to apply transforms. For example, if you want to apply a mirror transform along the middle of the x-axis or the y-axis or the z-axis, you can do those inversions. You can also swap axes and do an axis transform upon import. So I could click Finish, but I don't need to load this data set. I'm going to go on to another example, so I'm going to click Cancel. 
When you launch Dragonfly, we saw that you get that Import Datasets dialog, but you can also get it by going to File, Import Image Files. So we just looked at importing a stack of TIFF files, in this case the candy bar. Now we're going to look at a 3D data set, and for this we will look here at a 3D file that is, in this case, we will choose this example where we have a raw file but the metadata is not encoded. In my notes and even in the file name I've indicated that the matrix is 1024 by 1024 by 436 and the pixel size is 95 or 0.95 microns. If I double click on this I see that I have a single file in my import datasets dialog and uh, I won't click preview instead I'll click next and Dragonfly will tell me well this is a raw file and because the uh, matrix, the metadata matrix information is not encoded in the file, the user has to enter it here. So if I know that it's 1024 in X by 1024 in Y, and then if there's no extra information at the beginning of the file, then it will automatically guess that it's 436 in Z. If you have a different bit depth, so instead of it being 8-bit, you could choose to be 16-bit or 32-bit integers or even 32-bit floating point. If the data are in fact not unsigned but signed, you will need to click this checkbox. And finally, if you have any data that happened to be encoded in big Indian format, you could choose the reverse byte ordering checkbox. Now that you see that we've entered the right parameters, the data image looks sensible instead of nonsense. And we can scroll through and see the data. We can click next and then we get the second page of the dialog. So here I could tell it this is a brick. This is in fact a brick from the visible cement data set hosted at NIST. In the pixel size I could tell it this is 0 0.95 microns, 0 0.95 microns, and 0 0.95 microns in Z. So I could enter all of those parameters and then click finish to import the data set. So that's the behavior of importing a raw. The user has to indicate to Dragonfly the pixel size and the matrix dimensions. Now let's try one more time. In this case, we're going to import a data set that's encoded as a 3D volume file. It could be a 3D TIFF, or in this case, it's a 3D raw slash DAT combination. What I mean by that is if I go here to the Materials folder and choose the XRM Dual Energy Phantom, if I choose Dual Energy 40, this is a .dat, and this is the, accomp the accompanying .raw file. When I choose the .dat file, I can click Next, and it understands all of this information. So it automatically decodes that this is a three-dimensional file, and you see that it's 500 by 512 by 401 in Z. Now, we looked at the crop before, and I want to emphasize the, another feature of the crop when we look at this data set. As we can see, there are big margins here. This is a dual energy phantom scanned on a Zeiss X Radia Versa. What we'll choose to do is crop out the margins in X and Y, and we'll import the whole thing in Z. So we've reduced this from 195 megabytes to 95 megabytes. However, in this case, this is the 40 keV data set, and we have another data set we'd like to import, and it has exactly the same geometry. So what I will tell Dragonfly is I want to import another data set, and I want to use the exact same crop parameters. So if I tell it keep same geometry and click continue, and now I choose a second data file, in this case the 150 keV data set. It is already cropped to the right parameters and it's already reduced to 95 megabytes. So now when I click finish, it will load in both data sets and they'll both have the same footprint. So we can see I can take this data set and give it a color cyan for example, and then I can take this other data set which is still gray, and so you can see I have both data sets loaded. And you can see, let's do this, and you can see that I have not only both data sets loaded, but they both have the same footprint. So, we've looked at the import data sets feature, which allows you to import image files either as a stack of TIFFs, or as a 3D volume, or as a 3D volume encoded in RAW, where you don't have the metadata encoded. You see that you can always change the pixel size, change the name, and apply, it, apply different transforms upon import, and even crop the data and import multiple channels. So that gives you a full introduction to the import data sets feature of Dragonfly.